Hello, and welcome to Lessons from the Lab. I'm Mary-Kate Nolan. I'm Fabiane Skukupia. And I am Mahshid Niknahad. Today we'll be discussing flooding and floating, what these terms mean and which additives will help mitigate these phenomena from occurring within your coding system. Fabiana, can you start by explaining what flooding and floating mean? We often hear these terms in combination rather than defining each individually. These concepts describe both horizontal and vertical separation of the pigments within the film. In some cases, uh, the coating may appear uniform on the surface, but if you look at a cross section of the film, you would observe variation of color between the substrate and the surface. In other cases, you can visually see individual colors of pigments right on the surface. Thanks, Fabi. And how does this occur within the film? In order to achieve good coloristic properties, a good growing viscosity, good transparency and gloss, we turn to deflocculating, wetting and dispersing additives to fully separate all of the pigment particles. In theory, this is optimal goal. However, sometimes uh, some disturbance in the film can cause pigment separation. For example, as the solvent begins to evaporate, the density increases and the surface tension changes. These disturbances are due to eddy currents creating Bernard cells within the system as it is drawing. Pigments will travel with these eddy currents and different pigments have different mobilities within a coating. This can initiate the pigments to shift within the film and no longer be uniformly distributed. Lighter particles will float to the surface and the more dense particles will fall to the bottom. Okay, that makes sense. So what technology group can help to alleviate this problem for formulators? And do we use the same technology for both flooding and floating? There are a few ways to attack this problem. Though flooding and floating can be uh, addressed with some surface additives and rheology additives, today we will focus on a technology group within our wetting and dispersing portfolio. And these products will address both floating and floating issues. A majority of the products that we offer are deflocculating additives. These achieve uh, all of the properties that Mashid already highlighted. We have an alternate product technology that follows a different mechanism, the control flocculating. This sounds counterintuitive. We want to break pigments down into primary particles, but some challenging systems, especially those with heavier pigments, can benefit from this alternate technology. Flocculation is when pigment particles are grouped together in agglomerates and have direct contact with each other. Deflocculation is when the particles are fully separated into primary pigment particles. Control flocculation sits in between these two concepts. In a sense, the control flocculating products build a network of pigment particles, and each uh, wetting and dispersing molecule has multiple pigment affinity groups and binds to multiple particles. There is no direct pigment-to-pigment -pigment contact with each wetting and dispersing molecule binding to multiple pigment particles, you develop this 3D network similar to what you would observe with a rheology additive. The materials do not allow for as much pigment mobility and therefore help to avoid the floating and the floating that can occur when deflocculating additives are used. Awesome, that sounds like a really unique technology that we have to offer. Are there any drawbacks of using control flocculating products? There is always a little give and take. In this case, uh, the biggest drawback is that uh, there will be a slight gloss reduction. If you are making a high gloss system, these technologies will not be the best selection. However, they are often used in primer system because the gloss tolerance is generally lower and heavier pigment are often used, such as anti-corrosive pigments. Okay, so naturally the next question is, are there any other benefits to using these materials besides avoiding the flooding and floating? Yes, there are, uh, because uh, the materials create a 3D network similar to a rheology product. Uh, these additives uh, provide anti-sag and anti-settling benefits. The material imparts uh, pseudoplastic behavior, so it means they have the sheer thinning effect. 
But when the shear is discontinued, the network will recover quickly and yield some additional sag resistance benefits that you can see in these photos. These additives will also help to reduce hard pack settling that can occur when pigment particles are fully separated. It is important to note that these bedding and dispersing additives are not a replacement for the rheology additives within the system. They can be used to enhance the rheology package, but most systems will require additional rheology additives to get the right rheology profiles and stability over time. Great, you answered my next question before I had to ask it. So when we talk about flooding and floating, what test methods do we generally use to check for these defects? Similar to how we test the deflocculating additives, our top test method would be a color rub up on both the full shade and white reduction of the system. This will ensure that the color of the coating with and without shear applied is the same. However, it's important to mention that this test needs to be done during the initial steps of the drying of the coating while the paint is still sticky. The surface of the paint will be rubbed with a finger either side to side or in a circle. This a method predisperses the pigment with a shear force on the rubbing area and can lead to a significant change in the color compared to the unrubbed area. So as for product selection, how can our customers determine which additive is right for them? We have a small portfolio of these control flocculating additives. One material is dedicated to AQS system and the others are for solvent-based and solvent-free system and have some variation that will make them more compatible or better options for certain systems. I recommend using our selection tools on our website or reaching out to our help desk or directly contact our sales reps. Keep in mind that rheology additive uh, will help to keep particles in suspension and surface additive can help to minimize the effects of eddy currents and Bernard cell. So all three technology groups can drive improvements when it comes to flooding and floating. Thanks, good to know that these products exist amongst our portfolio and that the solution can be multifaceted across a range of technologies that we offer. Flooding and floating can be such a burden on our formulators to solve, so this offers a good place to start when looking for solutions. As always, thank you both for your expertise. As mentioned, we have a large portfolio of products. There are selection tools to help guide you and narrow your choices online, but we of course would love for you to reach out and connect with us directly. Looking forward to working with all of you and helping you make your product selection seamless.